another video that is essentially a remake of one of my very, very early videos that I had made without the audio narration. And in this video, I want to address a story that was put out by a particular individual and show why that story is bullshit, for lack of a better term. So... We saw early on in the piece an individual called Megan Cole came out and started calling all these content creators to give her part of the narrative, which was intended for... Uh, her whole point was to try and support Sammy Smith and try and prove that Sammy was innocent. Because in her mind, Sammy was the victim in all this. And what happened, the more that Megan Cole came out, she listened to content that other creators were putting out. And when something was debunked, she seemed to come back twice as hard to try and rework the story to make it fit so that it was still trying to make Sammy look innocent. And this is one of those instances when she did that. So this was something brought out by Megan Cole. Um, she was doing another tour of three or four different creators. This was after people had seen a video put out by CCTV where she had driven from the location where the party had supposedly been and to the location of where Kylie's car had gone into the water. And it became quite apparent that it would have been almost impossible for her to have mistakenly driven herself into the water from the location of the party. Firstly, it was quite a distance. And if you watch CCTV's video of her driving from the party location to where the car went in, you'll see what I mean. It was it took quite some time to get there. Meaning that if if as we were supposed to believe, if Kylie was inebriated, there's no way for starters that she wouldn't have realised that she was on the wrong road. Meaning that, you know, she's a smart girl, she would have and I hate saying it that way because now I hear Sammy's voice. But she was. She was very intelligent. She would have realised she was on the wrong road. And she would have stopped and turned around at the first opportunity that she could do so. She wouldn't have just kept driving until she drove into the water. Not only was the distance quite a long distance, but the road was unpaved. Whereas had she turned right when she left the party, she would have ended up on a paved road pretty much immediately. If not immediately, I can't remember offhand. So you have a road that would be quite easy and smooth to drive as opposed to a really rough road with potholes where, if once again, if you go back to CCTV's video, you can see that she had to drive really carefully to not bottom her car out, and there was a Jeep, to not bottom her Jeep out on that road. It's not a road where you can just drive straight ahead without concerns for bottoming your car out. Someone leaving a party inebriated, driving for five minutes along a really rough road full of potholes, seems highly, highly unlikely that they're going to get make it right through to the end and then drive themselves into the water. It's a skill that would, it seems near on impossible. Chances are she would have run off the road and ran into a tree or into a ditch long before that was possible. And this is something that was pointed out by a lot of people early on in the piece. And there were so many reasons shown why it just wasn't possible for Kylie to have driven herself into 
the reservoir there from leaving the party. It just did not seem like a credible story. But of course, when it comes to Megan, she was determined to continue to stand up for Sammy and try and find ways to explain Kylie's car ending up in the water that would, of course, leave Sammy as being the innocent person that Megan wanted us to be- her to believe she was. So Megan had to change her narrative again. Now, she did quite frequently point out Well, Sammy couldn't have done anything because she had already left the party at 12.25. And I think Megan said that about a 100 times. But then she also came up with a new story to try try and explain how it could be possible for Kylie to have driven herself into the reservoir. How someone who was an experienced driver like Kylie someone who was smart enough not to just drive themselves into a reservoir, Megan needed to come up with a new explanation for that. Like I said, her main goal, although at later times she expressed different reasons for coming out, she also at another time said, oh, I came out to protect the teens. And another time she said, I came out to stand up for my daughter, which that in itself is a video completely of its own. But Megan came out and said, in support of Sammy, that perhaps Kylie had, in fact, passed by the water to sleep off her drunken state. This is Megan's words, not mine. So Megan claimed that Kylie had become quite drunk driven to the water's edge and parked there to sleep it off. And then she claims that she probably climbed through into the back of the car and in doing so accidentally knocked her car out of park and into neutral. If you were that drunk, could you seriously manage to climb over two lots of seats and into the very boot of your car. And why would you do so in the first place? Now, we know that she wasn't that drunk for starters. But logically, why would you climb over the seats? Wouldn't you just open the door, get out, walk around, and then lift the boot, jump in, and go to sleep? if that's what we're supposed to believe happened, according to Megan Cole. That Cully had put herself in the back of the car to have a sleep because she was drunk. And then we're supposed to believe that having climbed over all the seats to sleep in the back of the car, that she wouldn't have realised that she'd knocked the car out of gear. And that she was totally unaware that the car was rolling and ended up in the water. Now, I think, even if you were inebriated, that you would notice your car was moving. So, this entire story that Megan came up with is surely worthy of some kind of bullshit award. Now, one of the things that Megan brings up is the gear configuration of Kylie's car. This is what she said to try and fit her narrative. Um, I need to know, again, about the car. I need to know where it started and how, and how it rolled. Because I want to go roll a ball down a hill. I need to figure out how I'm going to measure the speed of a ball rolling down a hill. If it was just in, so I need to get the the angle and how fast a car that is just in neutral 
that that would take for it to go down. But someone said her car has a neutral above the park. And I said, and I asked my daughter, because my, 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 her boyfriend has the same car. Neutral park, that's that, that model, her year, the neutral was at the very, that's when, where it's before the, it's in front of the park. Like you have to put, you, she can put her car into park and then put her car into neutral. Only on that SUV. Um, and, but if you listen to the recording, I know, and, and if you think about where the where the park is in the neutral, then you kind of start to put a different spin on everything. So you can see from the images that I just shared while playing what Megan said, that what she said about the gear configuration was just not even close. Kylie's car wasn't the one and only car with this completely different gear configuration that would make Megan's story possible. Quite simply, the funny thing is, I had heard this comment made on a video where Bullcrap Betty had basically made the suggestion that that was perhaps how the gears were configured. Seems that Megan has watched whatever that video was, and I'm not sure that that video is even still around. Seems that Megan has watched that, taken on board that bit of information, and decided, well, hang on, I can use that now to create a narrative by which Kylie knocked her car out of gear into neutral and it rolled into the water. We just have to go to the US website for Honda and all those images which I shared come from that. So it's quite clear that it wasn't possible for Kylie to have knocked her car out of gear so that it would accidentally run into the water. Now we know that this whole thing is bullcrap anyway because then after people started calling Megan out on this and saying, oh, actually, no, the gears don't work like that, Megan changed her story again. And this time, she introduced the issue of the boys, the older boys that supposedly turned up at the party and were blocking the road. And she claimed that that's why Kylie ended up going that way because the road was being blocked and people couldn't get out. Of course, when people brought up the problem with that narrative in that why would Kylie, who knows the area, be the one person that would drive that way and then accidentally drive herself into the water? It does not make sense. If the boys were blocking the road, there were plenty of other exits from the area that people could use without having to go past where these boys were supposedly running around with their wiffle bats. And of course, people also made the valid observation that since we're told that there was a mass exodus of vehicles at 12.30, why wouldn't Kylie have just followed the other vehicles that were leaving instead of going the opposite direction all on her own. That just made absolutely no sense whatsoever. So, once again, Megan's narrative was foiled by people using simple logic. Why would Kylie, when she knows the area, completely go the wrong way to avoid these boys when there were other options? And then why would she still drive herself into the reservoir? Megan wasn't content to give up there. Instead, she came up with the story of they took Kylie's keys. Now, it is possible that Kylie's keys were taken and perhaps some of these narratives that Megan comes is coming up with 
is based, based on facts that she's been told either by Sammy or by her daughter. Because we know that Sammy was searching for that Zumi's keychain, which was supposed to be attached to Kylie's te- keys. So perhaps there was a struggle over Kylie's keys for some reason. But Megan claims that they took Kylie's keys and Kylie got her keys back, but she didn't want them to know that she got her keys back. So she drove a different way from everybody else so that they wouldn't see that she had her keys back. And then she drove into the reservoir. So you can see where she has continued to adapt her narrative. Every time someone questions something and points out that it's not credible, she then comes up with a new version of the narrative that's just a tweak of the original version to make it sound sound like, well, actually, let me correct, you've misunderstood, this is what happened. Now, as for Kylie deciding, well, I don't want them to find out I've got my keys back, so I'm going to drive the other way where they can't see me. Now, here's a novel concept. If you've got your keys back and you are leaving the campground, why would you care if people knew that you had your keys back? Wouldn't you just drive and leave, especially if you had a curfew and you needed to be home at a particular time? So this new tweak of the story that Megan came up with, saying, well, she needed to go that way because otherwise people would have realised she had her keys back, once again, is totally flawed logic. Hopefully from this video, you can see that this particular narrative, amongst the many, many narratives put out by Megan Cole, is clearly one that is made up. It is clearly designed to try and make Sammy look innocent. And it is one where each time people have questioned the credibility of what she has said, she has adapted it to try and keep that narrative going. I will point out also that the next step after this narrative was her coming up with this audio of someone who claimed that they saw a vehicle go close to the water on the night of the party, as well as her claiming it's going to drop, I don't care anymore, it's going to drop tomorrow and then suddenly the fire cam comes out. So you can see this is one of the reasons why I don't trust the audio that she brought out, nor do I trust the fire cams. There's so many other reasons why I don't trust the fire cams, and that's for another video, as is my reasons for not trusting the audio that came out. But I think in this video we can see how clearly Megan worked on adapting her narrative to try and make Sammy look innocent, to try and protect Sammy to protect other teens and perhaps even to protect her own daughter. Thanks for listening. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, please hit the like button and please do leave a comment below.